All right, guys, we are back for our pot with our podcast here. We have designer Dave with us. We are doing our fifth uh, Soulcraft uh, podcast, number 18 for NFC, Non-Fungible Cast, which is the official name we came with. Uh, Dave, it is great to have you here, guys. We talked about Dave in one of our last podcasts with Soulcraft. Uh, he has a ton of experience in the gaming uh, industry, and, and he's worked on many amazing games. But I'm going to let uh, Dave introduce himself here in just a second. First, I want to say, WT, what's going on? That that caterpillar is getting thick. You're going to fly away one day into a butterfly, like I always tell you. How's the stash going? How's WT going? What's going on, baby? Doing good, man. Uh, I was at work last night, and uh, guys were... Uh tell me i look like a cop now so <laughs> they got a good chuckle out of it everybody's getting a, a good laugh and uh yeah it's cool i don't mind wife hates it but that's okay it's a, a list on the many things that she hates about me no i'm kidding there, yeah but, it gets uh, bigger by the day no, I just... Nah, i just uh just uh ready to do some uh, awesome podcasting here with designer dave been looking forward to this for quite a while now ever since they they did announce that he was coming on uh I've been super jacked about this day coming so that's absolutely right now Absolutely, absolutely. Now, Dave, I just introduced you a little bit. I want you to introduce yourself. Tell us about you. Uh, lots of experience. You've done work on amazing games. Uh, break it down. Like, let us know all about you. What uh, What's going on? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's I've been in the game industry for 24 years. I started at Blizzard Entertainment, uh, working on uh, basically Warcraft Three and, and the Frozen Throne, and then World of Warcraft on the as a quest designer. Um, and from there, it's basically a, a bunch of different studios. But I, I got to work on franchises like um, The Da Vinci Code, which, you know, that's not amazing, but <laughs> it was still a fun project. Silent Hill 5, Oddworld, Stranger's Wrath, uh, a bunch of canceled titles. I dabbled in Heroes of Might and Magic for a little bit. Um, and then just on and on. Assassin's Creed Identity, that's the mobile version, so people probably aren't too excited about that. Uh, made a tactics uh rpg game for uh, a studio in berlin which went on to become three different projects none of which i get paid for and <laughs> i've been to china working on games there uh i still write for uh, various companies and uh the last big triple a game you might have heard of is wasteland 3 which i think is one of uh, the best things that i worked on in terms of the writing and, and storytelling in that game but now I'm in NFTs and uh, it's a blessing and a curse, uh, a blessing because I can see the the future of what NFT gaming could be and a curse because I see what how it's being abused right now. And it's uh, kind of a terrible place to be for for most people who aren't up on what's going on. And so that's why I'm glad why there's, you know podcasts like yours that that actually give people information <laughs> yeah because that's that's what basically it and that's uh we're trying to you know we're trying to get people that information out there for sure uh great in, great introduction uh absolutely great introduction uh you named some really 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 good titles there that's a lot of experience one thing i've said before and actually we talked about you like i was saying in another podcast and one thing you can't buy is experience that's just the way it is uh so the more experience you have you know you, you're going to learn from either past mistakes or mistakes of others or whatever it is experience is experience you cannot uh buy that um not, that's amazing you said 24 years, something like that, over 24 years. That's a long time uh, to be doing this, and that is a lot of experience. Um, now, I want to ask you, what about Soulcraft uh, made you get on board? Like, what was it about Soulcraft that said, yeah, I want to get in on this? Uh, actually, someone kept poking me and saying, why aren't you on Soulcraft? Why aren't you on Soulcraft? And I said, I don't know. Do they even, you know, want me there? Maybe they've got their own thing and their own design stuff that they're doing, and um, they pretty much insisted that I talk to them. And uh, so eventually I did, I, I did a, a little, a brief get together with uh, the, the king. <laughs> and then uh, uh, I, I really liked what he was saying and uh, he seemed very earnest. It didn't seem like a cash grab or anything like that to me. Um, and I'm pretty good at detecting it. So uh, seemed like I would join in. Um, now, full disclosure that I'm been involved in 10 different NFT projects. <laughs> and uh, right oh, now wow. I'm currently still with four. Um, I think Soulcraft is currently my favorite, but I'm also involved with uh, Proto Games in Brazil, who are working on an NFT game, uh, Eternal, Eternal Elves, and uh, I have a minor involvement currently with Magic Craft IO, which uh, gets re-upped every month, uh, depending on if they need my advice. So most of these are advisory positions. Soulcraft is primarily a lore, lore and writing position. 
Interesting. So that was actually gonna be one of my one of the things I wanted to ask you was, is this your first NFT experience, or have you been around for a while? Mm-hmm. So that's really, really, really neat. And, and the fact that you say you're involved in, in in other ones, but this is, but it's a different type of role. This one is like from where from, from your experience, or sorry, from your involvement in this one to other ones, it's a very different uh, position. Very, 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 very neat. Um, I like that. Yeah. So you, again, another thing you can't buy is experience, uh, and you have a lot of that. Uh, WT, did you want to uh, ask him? Uh, do you have anything you want to ask on the next question? Uh, I'd probably get that next question. Uh, yeah, that's awesome that you're already in NFTs. I wasn't aware of that. I thought maybe this was your first one, and that's that's very cool. I like how you automatically can see that you have the vision that this is coming. Nothing's really stopping it. But at the same time, it's a very scary place, for, especially for new people. And you're absolutely right. Uh, I, I like how you have that take on it. So you you pretty have a pretty good grasp of that the, the wild west nature that this is right now with this stuff oh, and yeah. uh you know while we're on <laughs> that stressed. i mean i'm sorry go ahead <laughs> well yeah no I, I the first uh nft game company that i started with uh legends of crypto um like i thought i was going to be there for a while and so i did a full game design for them made a whole card game for them um and then the ceo decided to take over on it and uh, he he's never made a game in his life. And I'm like, all right, well, this is my 30 days notice then because I don't want to be <laughs> <laughs> under someone who has no idea what they're doing and isn't going to defer to my experience. Um, and then they've managed to screw up the, the game design as well uh, after the fact, unfortunately. So that was a very disappointing early entry into it. But I, I've stuck with it. Uh, uh, like I've, I've helped Avogachi with their um, ec- economic system. And there are some big players that are dipping their toes into the NFT market, like really big. We're talking huge corporations. So that's on the horizon. Those guys are going to come in. And once they do, uh, it'll either give it an air of legitimacy or have so much pushback that the whole thing will explode in their faces. And the only thing left will be indies who are doing right by the players. So that's what I've been encouraging everyone is to try and do right by the players. Well, I was going to mention that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go take it. Go, go ahead, uh, WG. Well, I was uh, building off what he just said there because, you know, we were kind of wondering with his background and experience with AAA games. So how far, what do you think that timeline is like with before one of these big boys gets into this space and, and kind of puts their weight behind it? Yeah, so Ubisoft gave it a good try. Um, they did it in all the wrong ways um, and were trying to clearly do a cash grab. Uh, and it didn't work out, it blew up in their face, and it basically introduced NFTs in the worst way possible to a large, large audience. And I, I was very disappointed in how they chose to do that. Because the utility of the NFT is what's critical for gaming, and they didn't provide any utility. It was just like, literally, it works in this one game, and it it's just a hat, and like, you know, that's one way to go, but it's not the the best way to go. They the the thing that's currently missing is people designing the games based around the NFT, and that's that's definitely uh, one of the focuses I think we see with Soulcraft and uh, a few other small players. Yeah, that's that's the one thing, and, we, and again, we we do podcasts all the time on this. And the one thing we say about Soulcraft is utility. It's just there's just so much packed into every single dwarf, every single everything they work on. They just pack as much as they can into it. And, uh, and, and it's just, you know, it's, it's incredible. Like that's what we love about it. It's just incredible. Everything you, everything they have has so much utility. Um, yeah, that's a, That was a good question about the, the triple. So like, how far do you think they are? Like, how far do you think it is away till you see these triple A companies coming in, uh, into the end? They, do you think they're close? Do you think they got a long way to go? Uh, where do you see it? Yeah. So with, uh, with Ubisoft's blunder, <laughs> I think that they actually managed to push it back a number of years. So we'll Ooh. see, because I, I know there was a couple big players who were coming into it, and now I don't know if they've delayed those plans or they're rethinking the way that they're doing it. But um, the one of the biggest players who potentially will enter, I don't think it put them off it, and I think that they will... I'm under an NDA, so I can't say really anything more than that. I think that they will keep going forward, and the way that they're approaching it is uh, what I would consider the correct way where the NFTs have a lot of utility. So... We'll see. It'll be, uh, I think that one's going to be focused on the mobile market primarily, but also uh, web-based. So we'll see how they enter and and when they enter. It could be, you know, one or two years off, or it could be five years off. So right. close. Now, um, you are involved with the lore with Soulcraft 
I want to get into the soul craft stuff with you a bit. So you're involved with the lore. Is there anything else you're you're involved with? Are you focusing strictly on the lore? Do you want to explain it a little bit? Do you want to you know do some background on it? Uh, take the mic. What do you got? <laughs> yeah. So uh, the way that I do advisory positions is typically uh, you, they can use me in a, whatever way they want. So I'll do uh, live streams. I'll do AMAs. I'll do lore. I'll write design documents. Whatever they need. Um, and in this case, they really wanted me to do the lore. So the way that I do lore is a two part sort of thing. I write the back lore, which is like the reality of this universe. And I start from the creation of the universe. And then I move forward in time until we get to the present day. And then I write the forward facing lore, which is I start to go into like, what are the different factions? Like, what are the races? Like, and then we're going to be building the world map. I, I want to do that live. It'll be interesting to see how that goes. <laughs> Um, cause it, the creative process can be very frustrating for, for, uh, to watch sometimes because, you know, uh, if I get stuck, <clears throat> it can, it can be a, a total shit show. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I'll, I'll I'm going to try to do it live. We'll see how that goes. I'll do the, I'll actually create the map in real time and start naming things and placing the races on the map and things like that. In terms of the back lore, it's, uh, kind, I don't know if. Well, I'll just say that it starts sort of like with a Big Bang premise, but it actually starts with a consciousness, an entity forms from a multidimensional universe. And then that entity is called the first soul. And it decides that it doesn't want to be alone anymore and basically creates the universe uh, all by itself. And from that uh, four dimensional universe that it's created, you know, all life is formed, all the planets are formed, including the planet of Invictus, which is where the continent of Solania is. Um, and then we have the evil gods, Mortem Sanguis and Avaritia, who are trying to destroy everything because they're jealous of what he's created, but he's put Invictus in this pocket dimension where they can't quite get in. And so they can only indirectly affect things. But what's interesting about this universe is that um, because the god basically sacrifice his life to create it. Everything that's occurring in it is effectively taking place in the dreams of this dying God. <laughs> and the first soul can subtly influence things and, and is sort of always there. So it's, we've got uh, all sorts of fun things we can do with the religions and, and uh, the, the way that the, the dying God interacts with the world and the way that the three dimensional evil gods are trying to influence things. Um, and so, Let's see, I, I take it from, uh, we've got the four races that I think have been discussed in the past, the dwarves, the elves, the fae, and the orcs. Um, and then the the fae are basically the first the firstborn children of, of the first soul. Uh, but though everything sort of evolves naturally on this world of Invictus. And then they are basically the cedars of life, so they're spreading life throughout the planet. Then the elves come to fruition and they're like, this is too chaotic, let's refine this and they start cultivating life uh, and determining what lives and what dies. So the elves sort of have this authoritarian streak in them. They're very much about order, uh, putting order to, to what the Fae have been doing. And then the dwarves come into the picture and they're like, they're architects of the land. They just want to build things and put things together. And they start to discover the steam engine and all this sort of stuff that the elves might consider unnatural. The Fae don't care. They're, they're basically considered crazy at this point. And then as the dwarves are building castles and fortresses and things like that, the orcs come into fruition and they're sort of like a warrior race. And so they're destroying everything that they come across. And you get this sort of cycle of life where, you know, the, the dwarves and the elves are building things, the fae are just spreading life and the orcs are coming around destroying everything. And they ha you kind of have to start over. So you get that cycle of life and death um, with the races. And then it's the dwarves who find the uh, solonite first. So they, once they discover that, everything takes off. They're, they're building crazy contraptions. It's basically the height of technological civilization. They've got flying castles in the sky and things like that. And uh, at that point, the orcs uh, find these dragon eggs and they're super jealous of what the, the dwarves have built. So they, they want to destroy everything. So they cultivate the dragon eggs, they they birth the dragons, they train the dragons, a process that takes like 50 years and several generations of orcs. And then they just go and they wipe out all of the dwarven technology. And because of the way that dragon breath works, it happens to resonate with the solonite and causes it to explode. And when one solonite thing explodes with this resonancy, it causes others to chain react. 
And so like the entire dwarven civilization, the height of technology, everything is destroyed. All solenite from that was brought up from the earth and, and brought to the surface is basically gone and all that technology disappears. So it's like an apocalyptic event in, in effect that sets everyone back to a more natural state. Thus the elves take over. And the current rumor is of course that maybe the elves had some hand in the orcs finding the dragon eggs, but we're not sure. Uh, however, shortly after that event, the orcs rule for like 10, 20 years and then the dragons leave because they are actually intergalactic <laughs> beings and you know they have to go find their own planet to lay their eggs on and then move on in the universe. Um, so that's where we're at basically at the end of this. So we've got the authoritarian elves sort of overseeing things going, we don't want the dwarves to, to rise up like that again. And uh, we've got the Fae just doing their crazy spreading of life thing. And we've got the orcs who are now more in control uh, just trying to destroy things where they find it. And the dwarves are basically relegated to building small fortresses and castles, but they always remember, there's always that historical precedent where like, oh, I remember the, the technological days we used to rule over this planet <laughs> and maybe they're kind of yearning for that. And uh, you know, we get into the modern lore and, and, and one day they, they discover the Solonite or rediscover the Solonite again, uh, unbeknownst to the elves. And so we'll see, we'll pick up the story there soon. <clears throat> wow, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta call you at night at, at bedtime for my kids, man. Tell them a story. That was amazing, man. I gotta tell you, <laughs> you should. You. My kids are like, tell me a story, and I'm like, uh, these two people walk down the street, and uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know how to tell stories, man. You, that was good. That was actually really interesting. I'm really, uh, that was really exciting to hear. Um, you'll be getting a call tonight at bedtime for the kids. I'll be like, all right, man, have fun, you know? So, uh, no, that's great. I really like the lore. I really like the story. I know a lot of people are into that as well. Um, very, 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 very neat. Uh, I like, I like how you explained that. It was really, really cool. So you come up with like, you, you come up, help come up with the story and stuff, the lore, the, the background, all that stuff. That's uh, I love that. I love that. I think that's uh, absolutely incredible. Now, is there going to be any Easter eggs in that? Like for when we play the game or anything, is there, is that something you do? Like there's gonna be Easter eggs. We've got to find what we play. How does that work? Oh yeah. Oh, I love Easter eggs. I, I'm kind of renowned for that. Uh, in Warcraft 3, I think I had the most Easter eggs of any level designer in the game. So, awesome. <laughs> so the Pandaren relaxation pool and things like that. So yeah, w once we get to the uh, process of actually creating levels and the campaign itself, I think that we would definitely have Easter eggs throughout. Um, but not two immersion breaking ones, but like allusions to other things that might come in the future and things like that. I like how you set up uh, your the stuff I've been listening to from you is you like to set it up that at the very beginning you're you're setting up the lore so that down the road no matter what you can go back and reference it and your your main focus is on that because you you gave an example of like Warcraft didn't do it right like that and you wanted it to make sense whenever you're referencing back and I also like how you have the four factions not necessarily fighting each other but their philosophies are different so you get that like political friction cultural friction going on and this is just me being goofy here i just had this thought i was like do you ever get into like uh these weird scenarios where it's almost like a tello nueva and you got rico the sergeant in arms orc uh he has to be a leader for his men and take orders from the high chieftain but he secretly is in love with like the the princess not so fair maiden matilda and they got to keep it hush hush because of the, the rival factions you got anything like that ever pops up in your head maybe not specifically oh, yeah. that <laughs> not, not specifically that but like things like that <laughs> all sorts of little intrigues and and uh people who are counter to their own culture coming together and, and trying to find their own path. Yeah. That, that, that's the sort of storytelling that you want to do when you get down to the micro level for now though, we're just in the broad strokes. Um, but the next phase will be really interesting because when I'm, we'll be doing the racial lore. So once I'm setting up the elves, like we now know they have this sort of background of authoritarianism in them. So it'll be interesting where we've got plans for things like they're, they're going to be involved in like psyops and like in invasive things that they do to, to the other races, Ooh. even like genetic, like kind of Dune style Bene Gesserit breeding programs and stuff that they will discover down the line. So it's like, um, yeah, the, the other races are going to be horrified at some point by something they've done. <laughs> Yours so your sounds way cooler than mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, it's just a uh, broad strokes. Once we get to the micro level, there'll be more stories like that where there's individuals dealing with the, the circumstances they're in. Yeah. 
Yeah, I love it. I love seeing how creative minds work and stuff. I always love seeing how people tick and how they think and stuff. And 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 you definitely have that creative mind. And I, I just love hearing you explain it uh, and, and stuff like that. So you're obviously super excited about uh, Soulcraft. Um, so you're saying how far? So here's the thing: like Soulcraft is 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 a is a beautiful game. It's a great game. Obviously, it has uh, great lore. You said you worked on games like like Warcraft Three and World of Warcraft. And so you you're familiar with this kind of genre, this type of game. Um, Explain to me what you can ex- – well, okay, I guess you can't really explain too deeply about what the what the game is. I mean there's obviously NDAs and stuff and there's <laughs> stuff you can't talk about. But um, yeah, so you're saying there's the four factions. There's a lot of uh, history you're going to make. How deep is this going to go? Like how far – like how far do you have of this lore? How deep can you go with it? How Like is there like a certain time frame you have? Like we have like five months in advance or a year in advance or is there things you can talk about like that? Like how far advanced you are with the time, with the with the lore? Uh, in terms of the lore, like everything I've done so far, I've tried to be forward facing and, and do it live. So everyone's seen what I've done so far or can check out the videos that I've done uh, for it, which right now is just the back lore and the uh, timeline uh, up to the present day. Uh, and then the next part will be the the map and like fleshing out the races and determining what all the races are and, and what how they uh are influenced by each other and then the next phase will be actual characters and we'll start going into this character is important in this region this is the king of this area and and what sort of relationships they have with each other so it'll be like a faction document um and you know i I think that each one of these will probably be uh take up the better part of a month uh, in terms of the time that i'm spending and then so it'll be in the next three months we'll have basically a complete picture of the world with all the major players all the major races and everything set up to go for whatever comes next after that <clears throat> um it's difficult to plan too far ahead <laughs> right because the 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 issue that a lot of uh you know these companies get into is that they'll promise a bunch of stuff and then they get there to the they have to deliver on these promises and the game design has veered off and the lore and stuff is not matching up with what the things that they promised. That's the big danger. And I, I always try to dissuade them from promising things that uh, they're not really 100% on. Um, if, if it were up to me, none of these companies would announce anything until like they had a game already in pre-production phase and thus <laughs> understood exactly what they were going to deliver. In terms of what Soulcraft's going to deliver, my understanding, and again, I'm not on the design team necessarily. This is just my understanding from the people that I've talked to so far. It will start with the mining aspect, and then later on, it will go into a full-blown uh, RTS of some type. Now, it has to be limited uh, in scope because of the limitations that we have in terms of who we can get to work on the project. Yes, I'm here, but I'm not uh you know 20 person team by myself Mm -hmm. everyone has to keep in mind that warcraft 3 was done with 30 people um and 200 ultimately if you include qa and everything else that comes around that and so it's it's quite difficult um to to make a full-blown rts so but i have a lot of ideas that uh for uh, a more casual version of an rts um that that we'll be pinging with, uh, pinging them. I'll ping, I'll ping them with, and we'll see uh, what they think of it. And uh, maybe there's something that we can deliver in a shorter time frame that will allude to a larger scope game that comes later. Um, but for now, all I know is that they're working on the mining stuff. Nice. That's the thing too. Like, and and it's funny you say that. How it's. I feel like there's a shortage of like like uh developers and stuff and it's like people say oh just hire more well you can't just make them out of thin air you know some of them already have the jobs or there's just not good ones out there you don't want just anybody on the team you want the right people uh and that's the thing i think there's a lot of shortage and especially with all these new games and companies coming out uh you know they're they're needed they're very 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 needed and you know, like i say you don't want to just hire anybody on your team you want to bring the good people in uh quality over quantity always um you'd be awesome in D. I i don't you you play D. are you a dungeon and dragons kind of guy I was going to say, yeah, man, I've been a dungeon master for 20 years. <laughs> I was going to say, man, you'd be uh, really good at it. We actually, it's funny. Um, I just started doing D&D this year. We have uh, through the, because you, you're a streamer as well, right? You do uh, YouTube and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I definitely want to talk about that in a, a, as well. Uh, so we, I, I'm a Twitch streamer myself and, and we have a community and every Saturday night we do uh, D&D and we have our own little thing and, and everything. So I'm new to it myself we, and, and WT uh, is, is there as well. He plays with us as well. Um, I've been doing it for about a year, but I love it. So I was going to say, I just, you know, I, I read it. I'm like, yeah, you'd be amazing at D&D. So you're the, you're the DM obviously, right? 
uh, I have been in the past. Though so I, lo- I love playing too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I often will come in and maybe do a guest character or something. You know. Very cool. I mean, if you ever if you're That's not busy awesome. on Saturday nights, you know, we're just saying uh, you're invited <laughs> to play with us. But I'm sure you're a busy man. Uh, so yeah, I want to talk about your streaming and stuff. You've been streaming for a while. I, I've watched some of your videos. You 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 kind of you know show what you do. You explain things. Um, explain. T- tell us about your stream a little bit. Yeah, so uh, I made the Designer Dave YouTube channel, I think, in 2017, I want to say. 18, 19, 20, 22. At least, no, maybe even earlier than that, maybe 2013. Uh, But I made it with the premise that I was going to do a bunch of videos teaching game design. And ultimately, uh, I did a few videos, but, you know, I was so busy working full time for all these different companies that uh, just didn't have time to to really flesh it out. But uh, recently, I did a collab with Abelhawk, and we did uh, Ask Me Anything on Warcraft 3, which is something that Blizzard never did. So um, wow. one of the videos exploded it got like 400,000 views it was basically what really happened to reforged i watched uh, that one <laughs> yeah, yeah that's that's the one that everyone's seen uh and in it i basically no holds barred just lay it all out uh exactly what i experienced and it's it was a very frustrating thing um but apparently you know people love frustration <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, so unfortunately that I think that's going to be like one of the only videos that goes into the 400 K range. The rest of them are like, you know, 4,000 views or less. Um, and especially the ones that I most want people to watch, which is the, uh, game design teaching stuff. Mm-hmm. So if anyone has any interest in game design, learning game design, if you're in school for game design, that's something that you should come to my channel for. I have literally game design 101, 01 and 101, 02 and some pro pro design versions where I go into what sort of documentation you should make, how you should create things, how you should, uh, you know, uh, what documents you need for, for any particular topic. And, uh, I I'm quite proud of them, even though they're, uh, maybe <laughs> my most low energy content, uh, but that's that's sort of what I'm in the industry for is uh, I think at this point, you know, what am I? It's going to be 25 years come July, 24, or 25 years in July. And then what do I got? Five more years after that. And I'm probably going to have to retire. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, passing yeah, the so. torch. Go ahead, you did, I know. Yeah, 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 you got a ton of videos on your uh, your YouTube page and. I've been starting to go through some of them. I don't, I don't have all the time in the world and you got a ton of stuff, but one of my favorite ones so far has been your origin story back from like, uh, I think 2018. I thought that was a pretty cool story. I, I, I invite everybody to listen to it. It was pretty cool how you started out, uh, just trying to make your way into college and it was looking pretty grim due to financing. And, uh, we're, we're all older here, obviously. And I love how you were able to go to four one one and get a hold of blizzard. <laughs> Just like, no, nah, yeah. yeah, yeah, here's their number. No problem. Here's the number to Blizzard. And you got a job that way because of your ability uh, to have knowledge with MacBooks. And it was an upgrade in cash, and you got to play Diablo at the same time. And it was just really cool how you were at this inflection point of difficulty, but just because you were able to keep going forward and keep progressing keep your feet moving you fell into something else that you weren't even expecting and it was something that you love so i thought it was a great origin story so uh that, that was one of my faves that i've been through so far i'm glad you liked it yeah that was a tough time uh i think i i glossed over my frustrations uh just to keep the video more upbeat but yeah that I had no money and no prospects <laughs> at that time. And so it was a total shot in the dark, just calling 411 and, and asking for the number for Blizzard. I didn't even know that they were in the same city that I was in. I had no idea where Blizzard was located at the time that I made that uh, call to information. And so I, it was super lucky. Like that was like a hundred percent luck, but you know, um, it, it worked out and now I've got a whole career spanning 20, 20 plus years. That's uh yeah full of like crazy games um that i'm actually really proud of which uh you know a lot of people work in games their whole life and uh don't have anything to show for it or it feels that way to them and i you know i always try to encourage those people and say it it doesn't matter what you made in terms of the title it matters what you learned on the, on that journey and and that's sort of why the game design 101 series is so important to me in terms of i want that uh i want people to learn game design 
uh, if they want to. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of people who want to, but think that they can't, or they think it's too difficult, or they think that they already know it because they have ideas and like ideas and game design are totally separate things. And that's, that's something that I try to get across in my series as well. Yeah. That, and it's funny you say that how you say, you know, the videos you want to really pop out, they don't. And, and it, that's just the way it is. It's a tough, it's a tough industry to get into, you know, especially when you know, you're like, this is really good, but how do you get people to watch it? It's like, this is a really good video or something like people need to see this, but uh, you know it and you know, but it's, it's tough to get there. Trust me. We, we, we feel you on that at, uh, at times as well. Yeah. You're saying you have five years left. You're going to pass on the torch. You want to teach people. That's amazing, man. That's really, uh, really good. <clears throat> so you're planning on retiring five more years. Ah, we could stretch it to ten, right? We could. We need you, Dave. We need yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. Could be ten. Could be twenty. Who knows? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see. I think. <laughs> I think. Well, I'll check again in five years, and we'll see where I'm at. I think that's sort of how you have to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I feel you. I trust me. Like, and, and that's the thing. I think a luck is a lot. Uh, luck has a lot to do with everything in in, uh, in any industry. Uh, even where I'm sitting today, it happened. It was a, a, an unfortunate situation that turned into a good situation. Uh, you just never know. Like, you know, picking up that phone, calling four one one, whatever, getting Blizzard's number. I mean, you miss all the shots you don't take. You know what I mean? You miss all the shots you don't take. You took a shot, and uh, and it paid off. Like you said, for a 25 year career uh, so far, and hopefully a hundred years more of it too. So, uh, Dave, that is awesome. Is there anything else you want to add into this? anything you want to bring up any uh any things that we didn't hit on that you want to let the the community know the soulcraft community the play to earn community the world uh this is your this is your chance yeah uh basically this is sort of a shout out or maybe like a i want to do a course correction for nft games and i want to tell them hey rein it in a little bit think about what you're doing before you start promising things and then build towards that thing that you promised mm -hmm. as opposed to the other way around. Because, um, you know, like I said, I've, I've been through 10 NFT projects now. Uh, half of them are dead for a reason. And it's because uh, they, it, at some point, like maybe you got a white paper and stuff, but if you're not showing something like the Soulcraft guys are doing, you, people are going to go, wait a minute, there's, <laughs> there's nothing really here and it's going to fall apart. No matter how earnest or positive they were about it, no matter how strongly they believe they could achieve it eventually slow down <laughs> yeah yeah for sure for sure for sure yeah because yeah. that's the thing like people always Agreed. promise a lot but it's 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 uh you know it's words are words until they're put into action kind of thing and yeah no i agree that sometimes you got to slow down take a step back and be like all right let's let's evaluate everything let's see what's going on and then let's let's regroup and move on from here no i agree very very good uh words wt is there anything you want to add anything you want to say anything you that we missed that you think uh, we should bring up uh, what he said is absolutely correct. And, uh, my, my experience, of this is kind of limited to a little bit over a year, but I'm already seeing that in several other projects that I've been involved in that he's absolutely right. At, uh, you know, talk is cheap as they say, and, uh, actions, actions is where it's at. So real quick, real quick. If you got to pick one character to play in you know, all your vast experience with RPGs, what is your favorite like race slash class to play? Uh, I tend to play rogues in everything. So it's usually a rogue and it's usually some sort of like warrior type race. So like in, in WoW, it was always an orc rogue. And in d d it'll usually be like a half elf or an elven rogue of some form. Um, for some reason, I don't like the short races, the gnomes and the halflings. <laughs> <laughs> the dwarves. <laughs> yeah, not a fan of those either. <laughs> Thanks a lot for everything, man. <laughs> um yeah, that's awesome. I, I I got one lot. Have you ever watched Vox Machina? This is a little off track. Have you ever watched oh, Vox Machina? Oh, Vox Machina. No. Oh, oh. God. Uh, I'm gonna send you a link. You gotta watch it. You gotta watch it. Oh so. my gosh. I'm the kind of guy I like. I like to go in, uh, make a mess. You know, when I play D and D, it's my guy. I just go in, make a mess. Don't ask questions. Kill everything. I get the I get the group in trouble. I'm that guy. Everyone's like, let's talk about it. I'm already in the room fighting. You know what I mean? So I'm that guy. Uh, but yes, uh, Dave, I want to say thank you so much. I know it's late for you. We're on opposite sides of the world. I want to say thank you very, very, very much for uh, taking the time to sit with us and chat. It was a great conversation. Uh, you're such a great guy. Really, really intelligent. You know your stuff. Like I said, experience as king in, in this world um very 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 thankful that you sat down with us and uh it took the time yeah to come in and break it down let us know what's going on the lore was awesome you're gonna get a call from me tonight at bedtime don't worry about it and uh, you can talk to the kids uh but no, i really appreciated it very very much so thank you so much wt anything you want to say on the way out no nope, that's it let's go baby let's all go. right thank you so much for listening guys we are out of here have a great night peace